So this afternoon, we have we want to handle an interesting subject. Uh, this afternoon, I want us to I want us to talk about conversations in our mind. Conversations in our mind. I was meditating upon this thing called temptations. And I realized when you study it in the Bible, you see how the enemy, the enemy got to people through conversation, through conversation. Uh, I read Genesis chapter 3. I want us to read it. Genesis chapter 3, we shall read the, we shall read verse, maybe the first five verses. And, uh, interesting things there Genesis chapter 3 remember we are talking about conversations conversations in the mind okay when we talk about the war in the mind uh, some of the aspects of this war are in terms of conversations this war takes place through conversations that go on in your mind now the serpent was more subtle and crafty than any living creature of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Can it really be that God has said, you see that? He said to the woman, Can it really be that God has said, You shall not eat from every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit from the trees of the garden, except the fruit from the tree which is in the middle of the garden. God has said, you shall not touch, you shall not eat it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. For God knows that in the way you eat of it, in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing the difference between good and evil and blessing and calamity. That is Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Are you with me? Am I clear? Can you get me clear? Eh? Some people make noise outside. I hope you can hear me well. I read this portion of scripture and I realized that the fall of man, the fall of man started with a conversation. <laughs> it started with a conversation between, between, the, between the devil and Eve. If this conversation we are seeing in Genesis 3, if this conversation hadn't taken place, then maybe man wouldn't have fallen. But we see this conversation. Okay? Remember, we are talking about conversations in the mind. Now, I want you to also go to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, I want us to see another conversation. Then Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And he went without food for 40 days and 40 nights, and later he was hungry. Verse 3, And the tempter came and said to him, You see that? And the tempter came and said to him, If you are God's son, command these sons to be, to be made bread. But he replied, it has been written, man shall not live and be upheld and sustained by bread alone, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him into the holy city and placed him on a turret of the temple sanctuary. And he said to him, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will give his angels charge over you and they will bear you up on their hands, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, On the other hand, it's written also, You shall not tempt, 
the Lord your God. Again the devil took him up on a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory uh, and their glory. And he said to him, These things all taken together I will give you if you will prostrate yourself before me and do homage. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it has been written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil departed from him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Conversation number two. The first conversation resulted in the fall of man. The conversation between the devil and the first man, the first and Eve, okay? The conversation between the devil and the second Adam, we thank God that the second Adam came out victorious out of that conversation. It ended with, be gone, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him alone shall you serve. And the devil departed from him. In the first conversation, the devil didn't depart. It resulted in the, the, the woman eating the fruit and giving to the man. In the second conversation, it resulted in the devil departing. Meaning, the second Adam showed us that you can defeat this devil. You can win the battle of the conversations. You can win the battle in the mind. Are we together? Are we together? Now, I want to show you another conversation. We are talking about conversations in the mind. I want you to know that the enemy will come to us in subtle ways through conversations, through voices. He will speak, he will plant certain thoughts in our head. He will speak certain things. Now, if you don't know how to distinguish his voice from God's voice from your voice, then you'll end up the way Eve ended up. We want to be able to distinguish his voice so that we will end up the way Jesus ended up, victorious over him. Hallelujah. Are you with me so far? Are we together so far? Uh, then James let us see a final conversation and then we shall share a few more things James chapter 1 verse 14 James chapter 1 verse 14 the Bible says James 1 14 but every person is tempted when he is drawn away enticed and baited by his own evil desire then the evil desire when it has conceived gives birth to sin and sin when it is fully matured brings forth death so in this portion these two verses we see conversations going on between a man and his desires are we together so far? Between a man and his desires. Uh -huh. Let me show you one more. One more conversation that goes on between a man and his desire. Romans chapter 6 verse 16. Romans chapter 6 verse 16 says, Do you not know that if you continually surrender yourselves to anyone to do his will, you are the slaves of him whom you obey, whether that be to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. Okay? So at any one given time in your mind, there is going to be a conversation between you and sin, or between you and obedience. If you yield yourself to sin, you become a slave to sin. If you yield yourself to obedience, you become a slave to righteousness. Okay, that's quite a number of scriptures that we have read. 
but <clears throat> somebody should be who is alert should even be already getting where I am what I'm trying to drive at what I'm trying to drive at the enemy comes to you the enemy speaks and usually forget what we have already seen in the what we see in the movies that uh, the devil is uh, a black thing with the horns okay uh, or with a big tail and things like that and uh, when you meet a black thing with the horns then you've met the devil no the devil comes to us and can come to you through a conversation in the mind can come through saying things in your mind can come through suggesting things in your mind or he can capitalize on certain things that your desires have communicated if you yield those desires the enemy will capitalize and take over those desires or he speaks to your mind and then after speaking to your mind then he lets the desires do the rest of the job that is what we see in genesis chapter 3 he spoke to her after speaking to her he stepped aside and then let her desires do the the rest of the job verse 6 says and when the woman saw that the tree was good suitable pleasant for food and that it was delightful to look at and a tree to be desired in order to make one wise then she took of the fruit and ate and she gave some also to her husband and he ate so we see in this portion in genesis chapter 3 that the enemy spoke and made suggestions into her head and then stepped aside and her imagination and her desires they took the best of her and they did the rest of the job for him are you getting how this war in the mind works out okay so having said all that now it's important that every child of god understands how to distinguish the voice of God from the voice of the devil from the voice of the flesh the last month we our seminar last month focused on how to know that it is God speaking okay it focused on how God speaks today I felt I should share with you how you can know how you can know that it is the devil speaking to you how you can know that the voice that you're entertaining in your head is the voice of the enemy how you can know if we have time I will even share how you can know that the voice you're entertaining is your voice is the voice of your evil desires are we together so far Praise Jesus, praise Jesus. So, now look at that portion of the scripture in Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. The enemy comes to the devil, to, 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 to the woman, and look at what he says to her. And Satan said to the woman, Can it really be that God has said? Can it really be? The first thing you need to know, child of God, is that the devil will cause you to doubt what God has said. You know what the scripture says? You have read it yourself, but a voice comes in your head and says, can it really be that this was God, God speaking? Was, was God speaking to me or was speaking to some other people? Was this word for me or it was for some other people? the enemy child of god will cause you to doubt what god has said watch out for any voice in your head that comes to cause you to doubt what god has said it is the same thing we see in matthew chapter 4 the devil comes to jesus he is hungry 
And this is what he tells them. If you are the son of God. You hear that? If. If you are the son of God. Now this is a man whom before that when he was being baptized the heavens were opened and a voice spoke from heaven saying this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Now it was it was clear God had spoken. He knew that he was the son of God. But the devil comes and says, if you are the son of God. Meaning, if Jesus had turned those stones into bread, it would have been a miracle, but a miracle that is rooted in doubt. Like he's doing it to try to prove that he is the son of God. That's why for me, you will never hear me saying those things of, if I be a man of God, if I be, you, you, most of, you once in a while hear somebody, one of the preachers or one of your favorite men of God, you'll hear him declaring certain statements and then he says, if I be a man of God. For me, you'll never hear me saying, if I be a man of God, because I know that I'm a man of God. I don't have to prove that I'm a man of God. I don't have to do anything to prove that I'm a man of God. You get this? If you are the son of God, any voice that causes you to doubt, that voice is from the enemy. Number two, the serpent comes. The woman said, we may eat the fruit from the tree of the garden except the fruit from the tree which is in the middle of the garden. Here I want to teach you something that I learned recently from Bill Johnson. The concept of of the two trees in the garden it's a concept that you have to deal with the rest of your christian journey there is always going to be a tree that god wants you to eat from and a tree that god doesn't want you to eat from because he has given you the gift of a free will he has given you the gift of the ability to make a choice and he will reward you basing on the choices that you make. So at any one given time, there is a choice that you have to make so that God's reward system can, can be activated. There is always a tree, remember? There is a tree which has fruit for you to eat and there is a tree which has fruit that you're not supposed to touch. And you're going to experience this in the rest of your spiritual journey, there is a choice of what to pick and what not to pick. And the choice you make will determine the reward system of God. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I hope we have learned that by the way point. Okay? So when she told him that uh, God says we should not eat this, we should not touch this, then verse 4, but the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die. You see that? You shall not surely die. Now God had told them, If you touch the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, you will die. And the serpent tells her, You shall not surely die. This is what I say. Any voice, any voice, that disputes what God has said. Any voice in your head that comes contrary to what God has said, either in his word or something that God has already told you, that voice is from the enemy. Don't follow it. Be careful about those voices that dispute what God has said. It is very clear, but you know the enemy comes and says, you shall not surely die, you know. We, we, we see the same thing in Matthew chapter 16 when Jesus had talked about he's going to die on the cross and whatever. Peter took him aside and rebuked him and says, this cannot be. Peter, it, you would think the people who were near Peter would think it is Peter speaking. But Jesus quickly discerned that this is the devil speaking through Peter because this voice 
that was coming out of Peter was disputing what God had said, was disputing God's plan. And quickly Jesus was able to discern the voice of Satan and he looked at Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. Do you get that? Do you get that, child of God? I, I hope you get these things. Any voice that disputes what God has said, any, any voice that tries to dispute, you know, you'll get those voices of, no, if you don't do this thing, if you do this thing, you will not die. This thing is not a sin. It's not a sin. It, it's, it's, not, it's not as bad. It's not as bad as the Bible says it's as bad. You know, you, these voices are on TV. They are on these voices are in, you hear them through politicians, you hear them through even some church people, whatever, calling homosexuality something else, calling abortion something else. They are disputing what God has said. Any voice in your head that disputes what God has said, please watch out for it. Watch out for it. We are talking about the war in the mind. And this war goes on through voices, 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 voices. Are you getting this? Now, the number three, uh, you remember when Jesus, when the devil took Jesus to the top of the mountain in Matthew chapter 4, 9, and says, all these things I will give thee, he first showed him all the kingdoms of the world, and said, all these things have been given to me, all of them, I will give them to you if you will fall down and worship me. This is what I said to you. Any voice or idea that wants to take God's place in your life, any voice that wants to, that promises you the whole world, you, know, you, will, you will travel the whole world, you will do what, you will do this, if you can just put me above God. Any voice like that is a voice from the enemy. Don't fall for it. Otherwise, you'll be defeated. Hallelujah. Are we getting this? Now, what more do you need to know about this voice of enemy? Why I'm talking about the voices is because I realized the thing with, the, with Eve in the Garden of Eden, the thing with Jesus in the wilderness, it was, it was a conversation. It was a conversation. And when Mary was praying for us, and leading us in prayer, she alluded to that First Corinthians 15 verse 33, which says, "Avoid bad company." Now, there is there is a there is actually a version which says, "Avoid evil communications." Avoid evil communications, for they corrupt good morals. First Corinthians 15, 33. Avoid evil communications. What I'm trying to show you is how to discern evil communications. These voices are always there all around us, in our head. Do you see them on, on billboards? You hear them on TV, whatever. These voices, you must be able to quickly discern them. You must be, you must be so alert that you're watching the news and you're just busy saying, I bind you, Satan. I bind you, Satan. Because some of the things that those news readers are saying, it is just Satan speaking through them. You, you need to be able, you need to be able to, to discern that what some of those guys are saying are just curses. You know, sometimes you can be there watching, you don't realize people are busy cursing the country, and you're there just watching, watching, watching. My friend, you need to be able to discern these voices and say, get behind me, Satan. Be gone, Satan. Uh-huh. Are we together, children of God? Finally, I want to show you something, one last thing about the voice of the devil. Uh, uh, Revelations chapter 12, verse 10. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, it says, uh, And I heard the loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Now, even here, I want to share with you something that I learned from 
Apostle Moses Mokisa, when he was teaching us on this verse, on 25th September, <coughs> I don't forget 25th September because, no, it was 16th August. That is when God honored, uh, God cornered me, finally cornered me uh, about starting a church. I had been on the run for a while. But anyway, that's beside the point. What I learned when he was sharing this scripture, it says, salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. Okay? When did they come? When the accuser of the brethren was cast down. When we are praying over our cities, when we are praying over our communities, we need to deal with a strong man, you know, we need to deal with a strong man in our families, in our communities, in our cities. When the strong man is dealt with and put out of the way, then salvation will come. Then strength will come. Then the kingdom of our God will come. Then the power of his Christ will come. If we have weakness in the church, it could be that the devil is operating in the church. If the kingdom of God is not really being manifested in the church, if the power of Christ is not really being seen, it could be that Satan has been allowed to operate. But if Satan is cast out of the choir, <laughs> if Satan is cast out of the ushers, if Satan is cast out of the church and the different other committees and whatever, then salvation will come. People will start to get saved strength will be released ministers will be strong the kingdom of God will be manifested and the power of Christ shall be seen hallelujah that is a free lesson I got on 16th August do you receive it also hallelujah 16th August of 20 uh, 20 what 2022 the point I was making there before I shared with you the lesson I learned from Moses Mokisa is the Bible calls the devil the accuser of the brethren. The accuser of the brethren. Any voice that is accusing, that is condemning, that is threatening, is not of God. You know, people who threaten are always insecure people. God is not insecure to start threatening you. Are you with me? God is not insecure to start threatening you. Any voice in your head that is accusing you, that is condemning you, that is threatening you, it's it's a voice. It's, it's the devil. He's the, he's the Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren, and you must be careful that you're not on the devil's payroll. Because when you find yourself preoccupied with accusing the brethren, okay? When you find yourself preoccupied with, there are some people, it's like they are apostles of criticism. Like, like, it's like, it's like your special place in the body of Christ is to criticize everything that goes on. To accuse these ones of not doing this. To accuse these ones of doing this. To accuse, if you find yourself being an accuser of the brethren, it is possible that without your consent, you were enrolled and put on the devil's payroll. And you are choosing the brethren for him. Are we, are we there? Is this making sense? It is the devil who is the accuser of the brethren. You should not join him in the business of accusation. I learned recently from uh, another man of God called Francis Frangipain. Uh, Francis Frangipain was teaching us about intercession and he says we need to come to the place where accusation is replaced by intercession. If you find yourself so much accusing people, so much criticizing people, spend more time praying for them than accusing them. Spend more time uh, interceding for them than criticizing them. You'll feel better, they'll feel better, you'll get better results. Yeah. Inter uh, accusation 
must be replaced by intercession. Ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, any voice, any voice in your head that is a choosing, that is any voice that keeps reminding you of what you did uh, last year, what you did before you got saved, what you did, any voice that tells you that, yeah, God forgave you, but you know, he's not yet very happy. He's not yet very happy with what you're doing. Though he forgave you, he's not yet very happy. Though he forgave you, you know, the voice of God is not a condemning voice. The voice of God convicts. Okay? God does not condemn, he convicts. He convicts, not condemns. It is the a chooser of the brethren that is always in the business of choosing us and condemning us. We know that for those who are in Christ Jesus, there is therefore now no condemnation. Okay? There is no condemnation. So if you are there struggling with condemning voices in your head, the war is from the devil. You need to arise and tell the devil, away from me, Satan. Away from me, Satan. Hallelujah. Have you learned something today about those conversations? Don't find yourself where Eve found herself. Eve probably failed to discern that this was the devil speaking to her. She failed to discern his voice and ended up eating what she shouldn't have eaten. This thing has been replayed countless times many years later. We fail to discern the voice that is going on in our head. We fail to discern the conversation that is going on in our head. We fail to discern the suggestions we are receiving in our head. And then we end up eating what we are not supposed to eat. Mm. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 That is